Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. As you may see from my little mess here, it's going to be one of my... It's going to be a new one of the lesson learned uh, painting session. So this is a painting I've done during one of my plenary sessions at the Schneeberg in Austria, in Lower Austria actually. And I'm not so sure about how it turned out and I want to try it again. And this time I decided to break my rules. Maybe it's also why I don't enjoy so much painting plein air is because I put way too much rules for myself. And one of my rules is that my plein air uh, journals are only for plein air. But I think I need also to use the paper when I'm at the studio just to get a feel of how it reacts and how it works. So today I'm going to be repainting this one in the same sketchbook on a new page and I will just try it out. I don't have any reference for this one so I'm not sure how this will turn out because I realized I completely forgot to take a reference picture of this one. But let's just try out and see how this turns out. And I'm going to do this at the end because I, I still want to give some kind of chronology on the first part of the sketchbook and then at the end I will do my tests and my um, retries and studio things. And here also I tried some of my supplies just to see how they react and I decided to quit this paint pen that did not do anything inside. Let me zoom in so that you can see how inexistent it is. And just testing my pens, testing my brushes, testing my setup because I feel that I'm not prepared enough when I'm going outside. I have my setup but I don't use it anywhere else than outside and when I'm outside there are so many things to take into consideration that I need to be more familiar with my setup to really be able to enjoy outside. So that's why I'm doing these studio painting sessions and I hope you enjoy. So we'll be painting here so that you see better and let me just tape, grab my tape. So I'm just going to take a picture of my first attempt. Just to have a reference at hand. And let's start. So I'm starting by painting. I take this small one with me outside because it's really nice and it's very compact. So I feel it's really nice for going outside. But I haven't used it yet because I usually don't take the time to do things properly when I'm going outside, which is a bit of a shame actually. So it's also the occasion to remind myself that it's okay to take the time. Also, I'm going to put it on here, just again to get the feel of how it would feel like when I'm outside. Even if I'm also using the table around, I just want to utilize a little bit my space. So this is my stab my Stabilo my Stablo original easel, and. It's very convenient. I will. It's. It's. I will link the video where I talk a little bit more about it, so that you can see how it works. So let's start with the background mountains. Use dark blue with some white for the background mountains. Thank you. 
And I'm using my water brush because that's usually what I will grab when I'm air painting. So I want also to find ways to use them in a way that feels comfortable. And see if at some point I need to switch to another brush or not. So let's add some more pigmented color here. And do another layer. That's still very, very wet. So it's also good to understand a bit better the drying time of this thing here. And I want the background to be a little bit faded. So I don't, I don't care if it's still a little bit wet, it just has to be dry enough so that I can paint on top of it. lower on the left side and a little bit higher on the right side so I'm also trying to capture that. Just waiting a little bit for this to dry. That's something I tend not to do when I'm outside, I just tend to put paint and not waiting for it to dry. So let's try to do this properly this time. Painting is having this kind of misty effect, which is kind of interesting, and that makes the color not be just one blob of one color, but a bit more uh, contrasted. So let's try this here. to achieve a good water control with a water brush. That's also why I need to experiment a bit more with it to feel a bit more confident with my water control. It's very really hard to do splashes with this water brush. Dark 
clean here and there on this side okay so that's it for the background i just have one more mountain to draw which is the focus mountain here that goes kind of there and then goes down here -ish. and goes down kind of here too trying to put a variety of color on this one and to just let it flow a little bit down like so for a more interesting background. Good, so now we move to the foreground. So I want to wait for this to be... I think I put a little bit too much of this. And I really like this dark green, so let's do some more of this one. I'm not sure how my paper will take this, but we'll see. It's also a time to experiment. Um, and for the foreground, I will just start mixing colors. So I think I will use this base here, and I will just put some more yellow on it. And I will kind of cover this whole base here first with that. I'm doing it wet on wet so that the colors of the other layers will fade into it. And let's see afterwards how it how it looks. to add some pops of other colors in there and a little bit of a sense of direction this will go up this will stay here and I'm going to put also some light yellow mixed with the white on the foreground here of colors here. And add 
some more yellow in the background too. Okay, so I think I really need to let this completely dry before starting anything else. And let's see how it goes from there. And also, now that those first layers are down, I'm really gonna quit this one and go for the dry ones, I think. So one of the issues I've had is that on the, I don't know if you can see here on my, no, I don't think you can see. Um, so on the, this part here, there were lots of rocks and lots of things happening and I was trying to put them, but it came out very bulky. So I think I need to simplify this and not try to put every details and think of where my focus is. So I will try to work this in a simpler way, let's say. Just add a little bit of trees, maybe a little bit of rocks, but keep them looser. And to do so, I think using my dry brushes, my, my travel brushes would be easier because I would have more control on the amount of water I'm putting. And overall, they're just with finer tips and they will allow me to be more detailed on what I'm doing, I think. So that's what I will be trying now. So it's not completely dry, but I'm gonna try to continue working because when you're working plain air, usually you try to not wait 10 minutes between each of your layers. So let's try to continue working a little bit. I'm going to take my round brush now and just put a tiny bit of water on it. And I'm going to work with the darker green here and just add some of the trees that were there. Just adding a little bit more definition to the whole thing now. So I'm definitely, definitely not trying to go super defined, I'm just trying to add some sorts of details here and there. I'm going to add some more blue for the trees on the other side because they were a little bit more in the distance. And they were on the shadow side here. And I'm going to add this blue to the base of the trees just to add some depth to the trees here. of dry brush texture here and a little bit here too just to add some visual interest to these different parts of the painting like so and now I'm gonna work a bit on the rocks. So I'm gonna go for a very, I will stain the same color palette for the rocks and just 
go with a kind of grayish blue and add some sorts of rocky textures here and there trying not to make them too prominent because I think that was one of my issues on my first one is that this rocky stuff are a little bit too much and then there is one that is a little bit more on the brown side that just popped out here that was just one of the features of the place so I'm going to try to redo this and trying to add a variety of colors on my rocks just to keep them interesting Put some more shadows on the rocks now. Okay, so that's it for the background. Here I'm gonna add a bit more darkness here and I'm gonna also do some more dry brush here just to this was a tiny bit too dark so I'm gonna just fade a little bit some of those but there is some texture, but not too much texture. Something like that, I guess. And after I will put a bit more of a brighter yellow there, just to give a bit more of this sense of sun still going there. Okay, like that, something like that. I think I've lost a little bit the depth of the thing, but it's okay, I guess. Now let's go for this foreground. For the foreground I'm gonna use a lot more dry brush, brush technique just to have really a sense of movement here and to have this sense of distance also with the background. So I'm gonna use my flat brush and just add different colors here. Maybe use this one because the side of this one works really well for the dry brush technique. And you have to have not your paper not too wet also. It really helps. And I will add some more of these yellow flowers also. That way in the foreground. Okay, like so, and maybe just to have the distinction between the foreground and the background a little bit more visible, just add some darker tones here to make the separation in the different direction here. Okay, I think I still think this part is a little bit too messy, but it will do for this time. Now I'm gonna use a dark brown and just make a little bit clearer what is happening here. So here basically you have the train tracks and so you have lots of things here for the train to go but we're going a little bit in every direction so I'm just trying to capture this
adding a few flowers on the foreground. It's hard not to put them everywhere, but I mean, it's not really a, a problem if they go everywhere anyway. So let's just have fun with a few splashes. And yeah, I think that's it for this one. Just gonna take this one off. how it looks without the tape. It's always very confusing to take out the, the tape because there are so many stuff happening on the tape that it feels quite naked without the tape, I feel. At least that's always how I feel about it. Let me take it up here first. on the other side of this. So yeah, this is how it looks like. It's still a little bit damp. Just so that you can compare. This was the first one. So I used gouache and a little bit of colored pencils. And this is my second attempt with just gouache. I really enjoyed doing this one. I think I learned a little bit about when to change brushes and how to achieve some effects. I really like how it's... I think this paper handled pretty nicely very wet washes and I was able to get a little bit of granulation in, in the background which is super nice I think. I still overworked a little bit too much this part here because I think I want to bring the focus on this one but I don't do it properly yet. I would have to work from reference images to think a little bit more about this part. But overall I really like how it came out. And I think... Let me know in the comments what you think, but I think it's a little bit of an improvement compared to this one. So from this to this. And yeah, it's super interesting to do this back in the studio and these lessons learned. Uh, for this one, it was a lot of... I think my main lesson was to leave time for my washes to completely dry and change brushes, not try to do everything with my big water brush, but really take the time to use other brushes and to use my... my normal travel brushes because it really helps to have more control and finally the same as last time just play with different effects because it gives a lot more dynamism to the whole scene compared to more stiff scenes they had before so yeah those are my lessons learned for this one for this time i really hope you enjoyed watching me do this small piece and i will take you on some new plan air adventures soon hopefully and in the meantime i hope you have a really nice day week whatever and i'll see you in the next video bye